The Barbarian Rage comic book is sort of like a stop motion comic book that uses these puppets that I've made uh, instead of doing traditional artwork. So this is the main character, Kilgar, and uh, him and his friend, Leech, the wizard. Leech, the wizard. <clears throat> they, uh, I don't even know what my own goddamn book is about. My name is Scott Cherry. Uh, some people know me as Barbarian Rage, and I'm a toy artist. I've always wanted to do a comic book. Uh, ever since I was in high school, I learned how to read by reading comic books. It's something that I always wanted to do, and I have done it. The Barbarian Rage comic book is uh, about a, a wizard and a warrior and their adventures together. I started the Barbarian Rage comic book as sort of a way to tie a comic book and the toys together. I wanted that old 80s thing of comic books and toys and bed sheets and underoos, but right now I'm content with uh, the comic book and the toys. I also have some trading cards. This is a mini series that will eventually be compiled into a graphic novel. Depending on how I'm feeling afterwards, then I'll do more. I mean, this is like the pilot, you know? I'll see how I'm feeling afterwards. I've definitely learned a lot about making the puppets and learned a lot about photography and toy photography and everything. So I feel like the books are getting better. And if I could start over right now, I think it would be even that much better. So I feel like it does get better as it goes on. Um, but it also gets more difficult and more time-consuming. It's a massive pain in the ass. You know, I tried to do stop motion when I was in my 20s, and it was just so much work. And uh, I put years of work into this project, and we never animated even one second. And I figured that this would be sort of a shortcut to getting that. I had been... Um, playing with this idea of making this comic book for a long time, for years before um, I even started it. Once the lockdown happened for COVID, I was like, there's no more excuses. So COVID was spent making this comic book and launching the Kickstarter and getting it printed. That's sort of how I spent COVID, was with this comic book. Doing this project is actually doing like seven different projects. Even just writing the story was a huge hurdle for me because I wrote a bunch of stories before I was even happy with one. And making, you know, the clothes for this and the armor and all the different faces and the wigs and everything, like this in itself is a massive project. And then you have to make another one just like it, you know, and then building the sets and then figuring out the, the layout of the book. And I've, I've never published anything before, so figuring out the bleed on the pages and, uh, you know, because I want to do everything right. And then I did an oil painting for the cover. And then, and then you have to organize a Kickstarter, which that's it can be a, a full-time job just running a Kickstarter. And then that never ends. I mean, when you, when you fund that, then the real job begins because now you gotta go make the thing that you just sold. My first soft vinyl toy was not easy. I feel like everyone's first soft vinyl toy is hard. There's a lot of gatekeeping and people that won't tell you where their thing is made or how they made it. Even if you did have all of that knowledge, then it's like, well, what are you gonna make, you know? Because then there's the pressure of you're spending so much money up front to get this thing made. And, you know, then when you release it, if people don't like it, 
<laughs> you're, you're, you're screwed, you know. This is the toy right here, you know. It seems very basic, uh, a very basic design. I did that intentionally because I wanted to be able to turn this figure into whatever I want, into anything. It's a blank toy. And I started off as a toy customizer when I was a little kid. And that is just what speaks to me is taking this and then just customizing the hell out of it. This started as this, you know, this is basically the same toy. What made me crazy enough to want to make a vinyl toy is I got sick of pouring resin. You know, I wanted something made. I wanted a production run. I've been doing resin toys for like seven or eight years, maybe more. And uh, I've been customizing my entire life. And this is just the, the next natural progression, I feel. I'm on the other side of it now. And it's been a fantastic experience. I think they turned out great. And I'm having uh, a lot of fun customizing the toys. You know, sometimes I get down on other people and they're like, oh, I just had so much fun making this. And I'm always like, your, your artwork shouldn't be fun. It should be grueling and torturous. And when you're done with it, you should hate yourself. But finding the fun in your artwork is a part of that artwork too. And it's actually in my opinion, it's one of the hardest things to do is to find the fun in what you're doing. I was in a very low, miserable place making toys a while back and I bought um, one of these from Barely Human. It was one of these blanks, these blank vinyl toys. And um, I, I painted this all these little tattoos and all this all this little artwork all over it. At first I was like, I just wanted to put like some red and black on it. But then I was like, why don't I really just go all out and just like paint the shit out of this toy and really just make it look awesome. And when I was done with it, I was like, I found my fun again with the toys and it was really just like putting this laborious paint job on this toy. I really loved it so much and I've done a couple other paint jobs like that and that's what really got me to this point of making my own vinyl toy is I wanted to make something with like a nice flat surface so I can go in and put some really cool paint jobs on it. You know, I'm a painter at heart, I love uh, painting. And so mixing the, those two worlds and using the soft vinyl toy, almost like a canvas, that's really where my two worlds met. And that's where I've really found my happiness. That's where I've really found my niche in this crazy toy world. This was a gift from Epoxy Crusader, but I've painted two of these uh, Mexican blow mold uh, He-Man. I did a Slayer He-Man, and then I did um, a He-Man with all villains, like, tattooed all over them. But it's always been difficult for me to sell any of my artwork. I don't know if I just never really found a good uh, customer base or if I was never really any good. But it wasn't until I started making toys that I actually found a community and people that were willing to buy my stuff. I am proud of all of my artwork, all of my paintings and sculptures and everything that I've done. But it wasn't until I found the toys that all of those things had come together in a meaningful way. It's sort of like learning how to paint the fence and, and wax on, wax off. All of that stuff came together and it took the, the form of toys as an art form and I am very proud of it. I'm, I'm proud of my body of work. There is a lot of artistry that goes into toys and you know I make my own packaging. You know I paint the covers to my comic book and I'm proud of everything that I do. If I'm not proud of it or if I don't like it or if I don't love it 
I don't release it. I've made fully developed toys, fully produced toys. I've cast them, assembled them and paint them and threw them straight into the trash because I'm not proud of it. So um, I'm proud of the stuff that turns out. <laughs> and then I learned from my mistakes. That's what you're supposed to do.